Hi, today I'm going to be tying a bird's nest nymph pattern and I'm going to put a size 16 2XL, which means it's a little longer than a standard nymph hook hook in the vise. I'm going to pinch down the barb first get that snugly secured in the vise. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is use a little bit of sticky, la sticky back lead to weight the fly. Cut yourself a thin strip. Thinner is better. This is about a sixteenth of an inch wide. Start just above the hook point. Make a few wraps up. Leave yourself an eye length for the head. And then go back over it a few wraps where the thorax of the bug is going to be. If it doesn't break off right where you want it, just use your scissors and pop it off. No biggie. Okay. All right. Got it leaded. I'm going to be using tobacco colored thread and Beneki. This is a 12 -0. Start of the eye. Cocoon that lead underbody in there. Starting that nice little nymph tapered profile down towards the back. I'm going to use some wood duck fibers off a feather that I've already been using a little bit and grab oh eight fibers or so for this maybe a little more if you want to these are pretty thin feather fibers okay just like so tie those in about hook shank length or just a little bit less Okay, and they're in. I'm going to tie this up the body. I like to keep everything nice and uniform when I tie. That way there's no stumps or bumps when you go to wrap on your next material. Okay, that looks good. Next material to go on is a little bit of a uh, small gold wire for the ribbing and tie that in full length of the body as well on my side or slightly underneath however you prefer okay I'm gonna keep that in my materials holder a little too much on there trim that shorter there we go okay Next thing we're going to do is grab a little dubbing blend. Uh, this is some rabbit fur that I'm going to be using. This is just some tan, some natural, a little bit of cinnamon and ginger that I've pulled out of my own little custom dubbing box that I've got here. Um, but kind of a tannish yellowish is kind of the standard for, for this fly, but you can use whatever you want. Okay, start dubbing. Make yourself a little dubbing rope. Try to make it as even as you can. And once you feel like you've got enough, come down. Start that body right at the tail, like so. Come forward, gradually building up size as you go just like so grab your gold copper whatever color you want to use wire and looks like we're going to be getting about five or six segments out of this one tie that off holding thread tension I'm going to wiggle that until it pops okay I'm going to rough up this body just a little bit holding thread tension again so I don't grab the thread with my velcro and whip it off and undo my work there we go comb that back this is meant to be a scary little scrubby looking fly okay next step is to grab a wood duck feather
And what I'm going to do is use one of these that aren't real good shaped. It's kind of folded onto itself. Not a real great feather for, I don't know, tailing or anything like that, but I can make a nice collar with it. If I go through and snip out the center quill, like so. So I've got a nice little V in there. And what I'm going to do is get a different feather. <laughs> I did not like that feather. I was going to use it, but decided it wasn't going to work. Okay, same thing. Clip out the tip. I missed it. There we go. Alright, here we go. Pull back the majority of the fibers until you've got as many as you want on that call for the collar. This is what I'm going to go with right here. Okay, I'm going to measure these the length of the body. Pinch and fold those around the hook shank like so. Take a couple thread wraps. That was about five or so. And if you noticed, it's wrapped itself like a soft tackle. If you find a place that's lacking or that's a little bare, just use your fingernail and pull it because things aren't really knotted down yet. Okay. A couple more nice, firm, see how I'm bending the hook? wraps. Now we can cut off and be secure. Okay. Use my fingernails to pinch back any fibers that are going to want to cover the eye. Now I'm going to pull forward on that eye and tuck back. Oops. Forward, tuck back. And that way I clear any fibers that are hanging over the eye out of the way. Okay. Next step is just to uh, get some of that same dubbing and <clears throat> make a nice little dubbing loop by pulling off a few inches, placing your finger on it, and then coming over, making a few wraps on the shank, a few wraps over the dubbing loop that you've created, and then a few wraps on the shank again. That way it closes up a little V that you're kind of trying to create with your dubbing loop and your uh, fur will stay in there. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, take some of that same dubbing, place it in my loop. There we go. Grab a little bit more and then pinch it together and take the other fingers out and just give the string some tension so things don't all come out of there. Okay, I'm going to grab a dubbing whirl. Or you know what, with, for those of you without a dubbing whirl, you can actually just do this by hand or with a... See, I'm just spinning this with my fingers. Make sure your fingers are a little bit tacky or spitty or waxy. I'm just spinning this dubbing loop by hand. And then what you can do is just grab a set of standard hackle pliers, clip it on that string so it all doesn't come undone. Easy way of doing it. You don't have to spend a bunch of money if you're just getting started. Just picking out anything that's too rough, too long. And I'm just going to wrap it on like a hackle, preening back from the eye as I go. And then once you run out, tie it off. Fold it back. That thing's never coming undone now. Okay. Again, bring that back. Add a whip finish. One turn in front of the other. Five or six wraps. Make it secure. Pop your thread off. That would work right there, but I'm still going to go a little bit buggier and just lightly 
rough up that collar that I created. Don't go so rough you're going to pull your whip finish out. If you start to have that problem you can do this before you cut your thread. But I usually don't have a problem as long as I'm light like that. Now everything is blended together. What's going to happen is when it gets wet it's going to create that nice teardrop shape that you want in a mayfly nymph imitation, which this is. And then um, you'll see the legging, the hackle fibers, and the tail, and everything will really stand out. My light's not the best um, to show you the colors that are in this bug, but you can see the profile and the, what I was after there. I usually do put a drop of head cement on there just to make sure my work is saved. There we go. Make sure the eye is clear. And that's my version of a bird's nest. Tied in many different colors and sizes. I'd say the best sizes are 18 to maybe a 12. Tie a few up. Good luck. Thanks.